Leonardo da Vinci was one of humanity's greatest geniuses. Endowed with unparalleled intelligence, he became known worldwide for his paintings Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. But he also excelled in other areas of knowledge, such as engineering, botany, anatomy, mathematics, literature, geology, among others. Considered to be a man way ahead of his time, Leonardo da Vinci conceived impressive projects that foresaw flying machines, sewage systems, battle tanks, parachutes, diving dresses, among many others. The probable date of his birth is April 15th, 1452, in Italy, in a town near Florence called Villa da Vinci, from where his surname came. The son of Piero da Vinci and the young peasant Caterina Lippi was lucky that his parents weren't married. If they had been, he would have probably followed his father's footsteps for the sake of tradition, working as a notary public. We know little about his childhood. He received no formal education, only attending an abacus school where he was taught mathematical skills useful in the commercial field. His father quickly spotted Leonardo's talent and sent him as an apprentice to the famous painter Andrea del Verrocchio, who lived in Florence. In this master's studio, the young Leonardo perfected more and more techniques and studies. At the time, he was 14 years old and considered an extremely handsome boy. It is said that he was Verrocchio's model for sculpting an impressive bronze statue of David. In 1472, Leonardo joined the Florence Painters Guild as a master, but continued his career in Verrocchio's studio, probably as an assistant. While still a disciple, Leonardo collaborated with the master on the painting The Baptism of Christ. His talent was so striking that Verrocchio, it is said, when he saw himself being surpassed by his apprentice, decided to stop painting. At the end of the 1470s, Leonardo began painting the Admiration of the Magi, commissioned by the monks of the Church of Santo Donato and Scopetto, Florence, but did not finish the work. This was often the case, as Leonardo's restless mind was constantly searching for a new technique or discovery. As soon as he reached his goal or satisfied his curiosity, he lost interest. For this reason, Florentines were hesitant to commission a work from the artist because of fears that it would not be finished. In 1482, Leonardo da Vinci went to Milan, the cultural center of the time. He was sent by Lorenzo the Magnificent, a member of the Medici and governor of Florence. Leonardo was joined by Andrea Salai, his young apprentice, of whom he made countless drawings throughout his life. In Milan, he worked for Ludovico Sforza, the city's duke. First, he worked as a show producer. It was there that he painted The Last Supper, one of his best known and most admired works. Over time, Leonardo became a renowned artist, despite being known for delays in completing his works or even never finishing them at all. This was echoed in Milan, although the work remained unfinished due to fate and not Leonardo's fault. Ludovico Sforza commissioned the artist to create a gigantic bronze monument of a horse, some 8 meters high. Leonardo, who loved anatomy and to satisfy Ludovico's requests, researched the anatomy of horses in detail, even dissecting them. The results of these studies were recorded in his notebook. But as it happened, on other occasions, he ended up refocusing his attention on other projects. In 1493, he displayed a clay version of the Great Equestrian Monument, which earned him widespread praise. While Leonardo was planning an efficient way of casting bronze from the mold, something sudden happened. Milan was taken by the French, and the bronze that had been saved for the horse sculpture was used to make cannons. Unfortunately, it was impossible to stop the French troops, who conquered Milan in 1499. Leonardo, still with Salai, went to Venice and returned to Florence in 1500. In 1503, he produced Mona Lisa, his most popular work, also known as La Gioconda. In 1506, he returned to Milan with Salai. The boy Francesco Melzi was taken in by Leonardo as a pupil because of the great friendship he had with the boy's father. Leonardo stayed in Milan until 1513 and then went to Rome. Now extremely well known, his name reached French monarch Francis I, who invited him to live in the country. In 1516, Leonardo da Vinci moved into a residence near Amboise, receiving the title of painter, architect, and royal mechanic. In 1519, weakened by illness and with a paralyzed hand because of health problems, he wrote his will. His heirs included Melzi and Salai, who were entitled to the artist's manuscripts and artistic and scientific works. Leonardo died on May 2, 1519. He was 67 years old. He was buried in the church of Chateau d'Amboise, which was demolished at the beginning of the 19th century. 
Many years later, Leonardo da Vinci's possible remains were found on the site and taken to the chapel of St. Hubert outside the Chateau d'Amboise. Leonardo da Vinci was endowed with enormous physical beauty, strong, muscular, with blonde curly hair. He was elegant and charismatic. He was a kind and generous man, with many friends. Because he loved animals and nature, he was a vegetarian, and two other brilliant characteristics made him stand out from the rest. He was extremely observant and curious. For him, it was necessary to take a step-by-step -step look at everything around him without missing a single detail. These characteristics helped him to become an outstanding artist in perfectly capturing a specific moment, transferred to the canvas with talented brushstrokes. He was attracted to men and regarded this with ease and serenity. There is some controversy about Leonardo's homosexuality. According to historical records, Leonardo da Vinci was accused in 1476 of having sexual relations with the handsome young Jacopo Saltarelli, a prostitute who was only 17. But there wasn't enough evidence and he was eventually acquitted of the charge, which at the time could have been punishable by death. A new accusation soon arose, but it too fell for lack of evidence. Although we didn't know for sure about his sexuality, that didn't stop the painter from depicting female figures with great sensitivity, capturing their souls. He didn't mind attracting attention. When he was around 50 and living in Florence, he spent huge sums on clothes and books. He used to dress unusually and eccentrically, often in pink robe that reached his knees. As for books, of which there are many at the time, he had works on anatomy, medicine, mathematics, and editions of Aesop's fables. In fact, Leonardo himself wrote fables. His works included everything he observed and learned. Because he was a great anatomist, he even dissected cadavers, portraying the human body in a perfect and harmonious way. Leonardo wrote down everything he observed and imagined. He was always ready for another draft, and, in all, about 7,000 pages of writings and sketches remained. He didn't add dates to his notebooks and would make several notes on a single page. He would even go back and use pages written long ago. Any blank space was useful for a new log. Thanks to these notes, we now know more about his genius. Leonardo used what is known as mirror writing, i.e. from right to left. This was probably because he was left-handed and avoided smudging. Upon the death of Melzi, who had inherited some of his notebooks, these records were gradually lost, scattered in separate places. Later, the sculptor Pompeo Leone gathered what he could and divided Leonardo's notebooks into themes, engineering, anatomy, etc. Over the years, they passed from hand to hand until Bill Gates bought them. Leonardo da Vinci became known worldwide mainly for his paintings. Let's look at a few of them. The Last Supper was produced between 1495 and 1498. The work is about 4.5 meters high and approximately 9 meters wide. It was a fresco commissioned by Ludovico Sforza to decorate the refectory of the convent of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan. The scene shows us the exact moment when Jesus, gathered with his disciples for a last meal, announces that he will be betrayed by one of them. While Christ's face remains serene, the gestures and movements reveal the outrage and intense agitation of the disciples, divided into groups of three. Unfortunately, this magnificent work suffered rapid deterioration due to the technique chosen by Leonardo. Over the years, it underwent several restorations to prevent it from disappearing. In 1652, the local monks opened a door below the fresco and, breaking through the wall, cut off the lower part of the table, showing Jesus' feet, destroying a section of the work. The Last Supper is a testament to Leonardo's artistic talent and sensitivity. Now let's talk about the Mona Lisa, or La Gioconda, a painting begun in 1503. Unlike the grandeur of the Last Supper, Mona Lisa is a small work, measuring 77 by 53 centimeters. Although many believe in the mystery surrounding the figure depicted, some claiming that the image may even represent Leonardo da Vinci, the woman in this painting was probably Lisa del Giocondo. Lisa was the young wife of Francesco del Giocondo, a silk merchant from Florence. Francesco commissioned a portrait of his wife when she was around 24 years old. The work, also known as La Gioconda, features the girl's smile and eyes. The smile, although discreet, seems to express happiness and satisfaction. It is said that when Leonardo was making this portrait, he had people around him who were making jokes, which brought a smile to Lisa's face. Another interesting point is the eyes. 
Even if the viewer moves sideways, they have the distinct impression that Mona Lisa's piercing eyes are following them. Although it was begun in 1503, when Leonardo moved to Milan, he took the painting with him. He kept adding brushstrokes until 1517. The painting remained with the da Vinci family for years and passed through several owners until it entered the Louvre Museum's collection. A curious event occurred in 1911 when the work disappeared and the theft was only noticed 24 hours later. Despite investigations, the police failed to solve the problem and the painting remained missing until 1913 when it was found in Florence with Vincenzo Perugia, the culprit and a former employee of the Louvre Museum. The Mona Lisa remains on display at the Louvre today and is the museum's most visited work, attracting millions of people every year. The Vitruvian Man was made in 1490 and is not necessarily a painting by Leonardo, but one of his best-known drawings, where we see a naked man with perfectly harmonious proportions. His legs and arms are spread out inside a circle and a square. Leonardo da Vinci based his work on that of Marcus Vitruvius Polonius, a Roman architect from the 1st century BC, who wanted to show the human body's perfect proportions. This drawing, in which art and science blend, is entirely in line with the Renaissance as it places man in a prominent position in the world. The Vitruvian Man is currently in the Galleria dell'Accademia in Venice, Italy. Leonardo da Vinci's list of works and inventions is impressive. He is the author of some of the most famous paintings of all time, a scientist and scholar of nature and anatomy, and a great inventor. With projects including instruments and flying machines, Leonardo da Vinci was a curious man with a unique talent. His ideas were visionary, and it is no coincidence that some regard him as the greatest genius of all time.